you know, spend a minute talking about your work with, I, I know you're just in the beginning phase of this, right? But with the police, you, you bring up a really excellent point. I mean, there's been all sorts of talk around defunding the police, abolishing the police. I think the the reality is as a country and, and localities are settling somewhere in the middle of that debate or maybe less than that, but recognizing that cops aren't social workers, right? I mean, and cops would easily say, we're not social workers. And the last thing you want in a mental health crisis situation is, you know, a cop with a gun, who, that, that that's what they're trained to do is to de-escalate right through ideally nonviolent, but sometimes it rises to violent means. Can you talk a little bit about what you're seeing on the ground in this work or what you're starting to see emerge? And, and do you have hope? I mean, is there, uh, do you have any thoughts on how it can get better? Yes, I have hope. I feel like with so much stigma behind mental health, it impacts us all as a community, regardless of what your role is. But for someone who is an emergency responder, whether you're law enforcement or a fire person, <laughs> firefighter or EMS, I think those individuals often have to deal with the most hardcore of the situations. And I say it because I learned more. I have, I felt those thoughts anyways, because of working in community mental health for over 10 years. But when I worked for the state's crisis line, that's when I really got insight. And I, I was speaking with the officers. I was speaking with the people at the different facilities and I was trying to help them navigate what was going on until we can, while I'm sending mobile crisis team to them. But for like a, an officer that I talked to the other day, like he was talking about just how long it is, how they have to sit out there with the individual for two, three hours until a mobile crisis person comes. And so when you're not trained in mental health or how to connect with someone who may be actively psychotic or even, you know, violent, things like that, it can be scary. And so I think with that, and of course there are crisis trainings that some police precincts do, but I feel like it's one of those things that the more we as a community discuss these topics, the, discuss the ramifications of them, but also provide some assistance. For example, there is an organization out in California, Mental Health First, that they have a volunteer-based support services for on the weekends during hours where, I think it's, I believe it's 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., but where they want to be that in-between, like like call them before you call the police when you know that it's the mental health because they want to try to intervene as much as they can to support. So they have volunteer counselors and people who uh, are advocates and have resources that they can provide. So that way you don't have to worry about calling 911 and getting that law enforcement involvement. They can be doing more serious things in the community.